So what's up guys, welcome along for another episode of First Rides. Today we're going to be taking this beautiful Yamaha XSR 900 out, give you my first thoughts, feelings, impressions, get off, have a good walk around the bike, talk about the specs and see what I think of it. <laughs> So here we are, beautiful, lovely evening here, and I am very excited to be taking this beast out for a little spin tonight. This is not only the first time I've ridden an XSR, it is actually the first time that I have ridden Yamaha's triple engine. So super excited to see what I make of the bike. So let's get on the road. As ever, we will run through some Whoa. specifications of the bike we'll run you through some bits and pieces uh, see how she rides in different circumstances and get off and have a good look about so let's go here we are guys Yamaha XSR 900 this is a uh, this is a 2020 model so Yamaha produced this back in 2016, so eight years ago now. It's been around for a little while. Uh, this is a 2020 model. They basically stayed the same from 2016 until about 2018 when they introduced a factory quick shifter. Uh, anything before that, you'll need to put an aftermarket quick shifter on it. And then they had another big update in, uh, I think it was 2020 when they changed the dash and the clocks and they went with the the R1 dash on there big digital dash and a raft of other changes so like I say it's a 2020 model this has covered just over 7,000 miles and it is a really nice looking thing I'm very very excited to be riding this and seeing what I make of it giving you my honest thoughts and opinions so a few specs about the bike they are 115 I believe 115 crank horsepower factory this one has actually got a full termy system pipes decat everything and it has been remapped as well it's got a Woolwich map on it so this one actually makes 111 wheel horsepower so given the original 115 crank that would probably be more like 105 107 wheel so 111 wheel horsepower is pretty good 195 kilos wet weight so it's quite a reasonably light bike for the styling of it and yamaha's 847 cc triple engine so putting out that sort of horsepower it's the torque of these motors though that really makes them usable on a road bike like this that's what they're all about we've got traction control we've got rider modes we've got abs which we'll talk about in due course so yamaha bought this bike out i would say in 2016 in this neo retro style but one of the things i really like about these xsrs is they're not a retro or not a modern bike pretending to be retro bikes i.e fake carburetors and things like that it is its own machine which we'll see as we walk around later very first impressions getting on the bike it feels quite comfortable quite narrow between the legs the bars are quite wide but not massive i really like this offset clock i think that's a little bit individual the same as this offset filler cap i feel like i'm very far forward on the bike like i'm almost over the bars um, and it kind of gives you that flat tracker street tracker feel as you're riding along makes a wonderful noise i've got a lot of experience riding the triumph triple so I am looking forward to seeing what this Yamaha triple feels like compared torque wise. We're going to go and find say various different roads and see what it's like. We've got 43mm, I think they are 43mm upside down forks uh, which are adjustable for preload and rebound no compression on there and a mono shock on the back same thing rebound and preload like i say this one has got the factory quick shifter being a 2020 model 
um, in 2022 they had a shifter and a blipper this one's only got the shifter on the way up the box it's got the termi uh, exhaust with the decat and the front pipes and it's also got these little wing mirrors which they're not great for looking out of and actually seeing what's behind you but you should be more focused that way anyway and they look a bit cooler so um, I think they do add a little bit to the bike we are currently riding around in power mode A, it's a nice bit of gravel there for us just sort of getting used to the bike, having a feel of it seeing what the response is like we've got 300mm twin discs on the front and I should imagine they're four pot calipers but I'm not entirely sure she certainly goes well so not super powerful just over 100 horsepower but it's not super heavy either and that with the triple like we say on the road it's the way that it's actually going to deliver that power so this bike is actually for sale if anyone's interested the same as anything it's always for sale for the right price so this is going to be the gentleman wants seven and a half thousand pounds for this so if you are interested in purchasing this bike drop a comment down in the description dm me and we can talk some numbers or I'll put you in contact with the guy who owns it currently they are retailing the UK anywhere between uh, around £6,000 probably for the cheapest high-ish mileage 2016 model all the way up to £10,000 for a late 2022 plus model they've obviously also just released the um, XSR 900 GP which has got people's tastes for these going again and they're on sale for around circa twelve and a half thousand so something like this 2020 with uh seven thousand miles on it seven and a half thousand pounds very well looked after nice machine get in contact if you're interested so we're currently cruising along a little b road here doing 40 miles an hour very nice round display I like this display it's all digital there's no analog on there all digital we've got our rev counter around the outside speedo our modes our gear indicator and our fuel down the bottom we have traction control set on one at the minute we've got modes one two or off and we have riding modes a b or standard I believe the power output of the bike is exactly the same no matter what mode you're in on the on the ECU but what changes is the way the throttle feels in your hand when you're in the different modes as you can see it picks up pretty well there in mode A which is the most aggressive mode like I say this bike's been mapped so I don't know if it's been mapped in all the modes or just mode A but to me if you've got uh, the most fun mode to ride a bike in I suppose you could call it why not just keep it in that and just not turn the throttle as far uh, only exception to that maybe is if you've got a, a smoother throttle control in B or standard mode maybe that would be ideal for town riding things like that maybe the, the throttle gets a little bit choppy like this if you're riding around in A mode in the towns seat feels really comfortable feels nice pegs don't feel too high it feels like a really nice upright riding position obviously you've got no wind deflection here on the front of it however you're not getting any turbulent air hitting you in the face it's all just the fresh air coming at you so it's not too bad it's just on your chest really the same as any naked machine and yeah it feels very nice so far only slight thing I would say so far and this is only a personal thing obviously ergonomics that can be changed to your own personal preference is the gear shifter is too far down for my feet I prefer it a bit more level and upright just to, so I don't have to feel like I'm hooking my feet underneath it and the indicator button doesn't feel premium quality it just feels a little bit second hand parts bin kind of thing but other than that the rest of the controls feel quite nice no issue with the rest of it clutch is very light very nice and easy to use I believe it's got some slipper assist clutch on there as well when you're going down the box it certainly does feel like it's got enough power to put a massive grin on your face which is all that matters we are currently this machine is on 
um, Metzler Road Tech tyres. So they're quite a touring tyre. They feel quite flat in profile. They, I mean, it's quite a nimble bike, but you have got to use these quite wide bars to force it from side to side. It's not like it falls off the edge like a, a slick tyre would, different profile, obviously. But still plenty of grip offered from the tyres. So just to have a little feel and see what the electronics are like on it, let's change this into B mode, which we've just done there with the mode. You can change the mode on the fly, as long as the throttle is fully closed, you can just press the mode button and it will change between the modes. I'm not sure about the traction control, can we do that as well? Yes, you can, so you can move the traction control as well. You probably have to be stationary to turn it off, because you'll have to hold it on to turn the traction off. However, we're not too worried about turning the traction control off tonight. So let's see if that throttle feels any nicer going through this small, quiet point village. Drop her down another gear, two and a half, three thousand RPM. And yeah, lovely thing, lovely machine, makes a fantastic noise, loads of torque low down. We'll show you even in B mode coming out of this 30 restricted zone. We'll wind the throttle on in third gear and see how she pulls up the hill, but I'm pretty sure will have plenty of grunt this is the thing modern day bikes you don't need these ridiculous horsepower numbers you just can't use it on the road anything circa 120 horsepower is plenty as long as the bike's under 200 kilos so I say we are just three and a half thousand rpm 34 miles an hour And it certainly has enough pull straight from low down the revs to catch up with other traffic so yeah plenty of low down torque and grunt from that triple motor makes a fantastic sound gearbox is super super slick gearbox is really nice coupled with that light clutch when you're changing down the gears i'm just going to spend a little bit of time now riding it around find somewhere to park up and we'll have a little walk around the machine and talk about some of the things on it so before we find somewhere to pull up and have a walk around the bar, we'll just give it a quick run down the dual carriageway and see what it's like at 70 miles an hour with the wind blowing on you. There we are, national UK speed limit. Actually, it feels okay. It's quite a bit of air hitting you here on your shoulders of the front of you, but any naked motorcycle's gonna do that. Uh, when it's really, really hot weather and you're cruising down through Europe, I should imagine that'd be quite nice, actually, to cool you down if it was freezing cold and you're riding through Scandinavia. I don't think that'd be quite so nice. My legs do feel like they're catching the wind quite a lot as well, tucked down here but it's what you're going to expect on an unfaired bike so as expected a bit windy but nothing excessive so as we go and find somewhere to park up and have a walk around the bike just to say i've been riding it around in b mode for a little while now i can't say it's been horrendous by any means it just feels to dampen that throttle a little bit which actually is quite nice if you're not looking to hair around and to put wheelies everywhere just to have that little bit more of a gentle throttle despite what i said earlier it's actually quite a nice relaxing ride especially on a road like this where surface might not be fantastic so here we go guys not the most picturesque of spots but it will do for a walk around the bike. So here we go, we're off the bike. Let's have a quick walk around it. And first impressions, you have to say, they really nailed this uh, Neo Retro style. Looks wonderful, I think. They've really hit the nail on the head. Like I say, they've made it retro style with things like these aluminum brackets on the side and the single headlamp, big wide bars. But they haven't gone to the extreme of making it to try and make it look 
old and retro in the fact that you can still see the ABS sensors and the wheels there. Uh, you can still quite clearly see it's a modern style engine. So I really applaud Yamaha for making it look like that. So like I say, we've currently got these Metzler Road Tech tires on there. 300 mil front discs, upside down forks, four pot calipers. Um, single headlight, as we say on the front, we've got this wonderful paint scheme, Yamaha paint scheme, they come in various different colours. Lovely little bit of aluminium here tying into the bit of the front as well. Tailpipe, turny tailpipe there, which is wonderful, and then um, lovely headers there. Quite exposed and it takes quite a lot to keep them clean and keep the muck off of them. Love the multi-spoke wheels for the style of the bike really suits the rest of the style of the bike and the rear shock absorber is quite nicely tucked away up in here it's not an obvious mono shock system set up on that banana swing arm so all in all that looks lovely the rear seat or the whole seat i should say is a fitting piece to the bike the whole thing just ties in really nice especially when you look at it from the rear there it looks like that kind of flat tracker style from back in the 80s. Private plate on it, that isn't for sale with the bike if you are interested in purchasing it. RNG tail tidy, rest of it's all standard, standard gear and standard rear sets. Here we can see the standard Yamaha quick shifter, the little bar and mirrors, and what we say, some of the controls. So this is where the mirrors would be that has been blanked off. We talk about the indicator switch, it's just, it just when you're riding it and you're pushing it with gloves on, it doesn't feel that premium when you compare it to the other switches for some reason. No problem with any of the other switches, it just seems to feel with that particular one, it's just a bit loose compared to other bikes, but not a major issue. If we turn the dash on, like we say, this lovely round dial indicator with our rev, our digital rev count around the outside speed bang in the middle the modes between you press the mode button there and it goes between a b and standard the quick shifter indicates it's got a factory quick shifter on there gear indicator next to it traction control system i believe now if we hold that on it will switch the tc off which is indicated with tc off there and then we can go one or two whichever one we want it on fuel gauge nice simple clear concise dials Temperature, and I believe you can scroll between your MPG and your myelometer and your odometer. 7,200 miles this is completed. So you're all nice and clear and concise information, everything you need. The controls are nice and easy to get to when you're riding along with gloves on. It's easy to manoeuvre the traction control switch and the mode button, not a problem. Start switch is a little bit odd in the fact that rather than just pushing the button, you've actually got to hold it down, but it's not a problem. You can still start the bike fine. And yeah, there's not a great deal else to say about it other than there it is. Just a couple of quick points to know in it whilst we are looking around here. It has still got, well, a lot of mod modern bikes have got like these plasticky parts, plastic bits of trim that are covering bits and pieces up all over the bike but that is not exclusive to Yamaha that seems to be where they come in at a certain price point unless you're going out and buying something like a CCM where you'll get the billet aluminium brackets and everything on there they do still use all these little bits of plastic to cover little bits and pieces up but that is not exclusive to the Yamaha that is across the Kawasaki, the Ducati, all of the different brands. So yeah, lovely looking machine, certainly looks the part. Let's get back on the road, take it for some more riding. So we're all suited up again, let's jump back on and crack on and carry on seeing what we think of it. Worth noting a couple of bits actually whilst I'm here, the stand has got this very long bit to hook it back up with which is really handy when you've got big cumbersome motorbike boots on and the seat height is fine. I'm not sure of the exact height. Again, it'll be in the specs down in the description as they always are, but I'm 5'7 and I can quite comfortably, I'm on toes with both feet and then quite easily with a slight lean, flat foot on the left-hand side. So let's fire up. Does sound nice. Something about that triple rumble, isn't there? 
always reminds me of full chat under load of a sort of 80s turbo formula one car that noise so let's go and find some roads that we know quite well and uh, carry on riding So we've been flicking between different modes and bits and pieces now we're just going to leave it in mode a traction control set on one obviously the abs is on very dry nice warm evening tonight so i'm not worried about the abs cutting in and the traction control we're not going to be riding it that silly so we shall leave it there apparently these are quite the weeding machine so the quick shifter does feel silky smooth on the way up the box like we say gearbox is lovely the seat, it's not, I wouldn't say the seat's hard and I wouldn't say the suspension's hard. I think when it's static and you push the suspension, it feels quite supple and quite soft. However, as you're going over the bumps, it's a little bit harsh and crashy. So whether that's down to suspension adjustment or whether that is actually, maybe we need to do a fork oil change to lighten the weight of oil in there and make it a little bit more reactive to the bumps on the road might potentially help, but it's not uncomfortable it just feels as if you're but then that's the state of the roads as well i suppose um and i think it would definitely benefit from a new set of tires uh which the rear tire on this has been slightly squared off and the profile in general more of a touring tire i think you could get it to turn a bit nicer on the sort of side of the tire at speed so whilst we've been building along to a nice decent bit of road we will talk about the build quality of it it has covered like we say 7200 miles and it is looking in really fantastic shape to be honest the only slight bit of wear is on these bit of rust on the back of these bar end mirrors but they're not genuine yamaha and on the inside of the chain a little bit of rust but that's just where you don't seem to clean that part of the chain very well all the rest of it all the plastics all the brake hoses all the other levers and the bits that tend to get knocked and get marks on indicators where they get knocked and they can snap off quite easily none of those issues with this bike it's all very nicely put together it's all still there it's all still complete so yeah i would rate the build quality is very good on this machine so that engine really is the heart of the machine i mean the engine is the main part of any bike which is one of the reasons i like all the uh, european stuff all the italian stuff with this v4s v twins because it's different having a different engine in there and inline four is okay unless you're using a yamaha cross plane they all do pretty much and feel pretty much the same way this triple configuration not only does it make an amazing noise but it's also got that rideability of the torque like i found myself a lot on this ride just being in a much higher gear like this cruising around and coming into a small village at 30 miles an hour and you realize you're in fourth fifth gear cruising along and you just carry on straight through the village so you're not up and down the box all the time it's quite usable power bit of a head shake from her there no steering damper fitted to this uh like i say quite a lot of weight feels like you're in quite an upright riding position with quite a lot of weight over the front of the bike brakes inspire confidence brakes feel really really nice plenty of power there in the brakes which is always important if you've got a machine capable of going beyond the national speed limit here in the uk Again, this is another example of what I was talking about. We're just cruising through this small little 30 mile an hour village here and we're just still in fourth gear. Doesn't feel like the engine's particularly labouring, two and a half thousand RPM. Doesn't feel like you need to be changing down to third or second gear and screaming the tits off of it. Being obnoxious and loud. quick shifter really is like melted lure pack in the Cypriot sun so a couple of bits we haven't mentioned it does of course share the engine and chassis with the uh, Yamaha MT-09 just a different dress on it uh, which means it does have a really good turning circle if you're trying to maneuver it around your garage the dash is fantastic for being lit up really really clearly to see nice and easy to read the display even in bright sunshine 
So fuel tank wise, I'm not sure how big it is, but we've just put 10 litres in and it's gone back up to pretty much, well it's gone back up to full, so it can't be a massive tank on there, it's probably 15, 16 litre tank despite the look of it. So your MPG with the wind resistance isn't going to be amazing, but it's more measured in smiles per miles, not miles per gallon. So who needs an auto blipper anyway when you've got one right there? So I hope there's not too many flies getting on the camera now guys, it's getting a bit later in the night. Let's do a quick roundup of this machine. So, vital question, would I buy a Yamaha XSR900? What am I impressed with, what am I not so impressed with? Well, for the price of them, yes I would buy an XSR900. The only thing that's putting me off buying one is that I've kind of got my heart set on a V4 Torino as the next road bike, just because it's got that V4 lump in it, but they are a little bit more expensive. And you can't deny that actually the XSR has got nicer styling. It definitely looks a nicer machine, looks more retro to stand around and admire. So I would definitely buy one, mainly because of this triple engine. The torque of that triple engine is plenty of power on the roads. It feels a lot quicker than the 115 standard horsepower. Obviously this one has been played around with a little bit, but it's that flat torque curve from low down the revs that really feels like you're moving on the roads. I mean, you can wind it on in a high gear and it still feels like it's pulling your arms off. Really upright riding position, loads of leg room, loads of space between the seat and the pegs, so you're comfortable. The ride is a little bit harsh, a little bit crashy over some of the bumps, but that would probably be ironed out with a little bit of suspension work. Continuing with the theme of the suspension, I have found it does shake its head a little bit when you start to wind it on and get it over some bumpy roads, so maybe it's something that would benefit from a steering damper on there at some point. Um, or if you did sort do a bit of suspension work, I don't even know how this has been set up, whether it's been set up for a certain ride away, that might resolve that issue. So that might be a bit more bike specific than necessarily Yamaha XSR specific. To be honest with you on the road, you probably don't even need the 900. You probably get away with the 700, but if you want to be a little bit more of a hooligan, the 900 is definitely the bike for you. It absolutely has got enough power to pop wheelies all day long and put a grin on your face. Uh, I probably wouldn't use it to commute on every day just because of the lack of wind protection and it's quite eager and keen to go. It's not massively relaxing riding it. I say you're comfortable, but it's not like a Honda VFR or anything that was Triumph Sprint, something that you would tend to use to commute on. You still could, it's absolutely capable. So there it is, in a nutshell, that's my first impressions of the XSR 900. I hope that's been useful to somebody if they're looking to purchase one of these. So as ever, the uh, specs will be down in the description, and if you are interested in this bike, drop us a DM, I can thoroughly, thoroughly recommend it. And thanks for tuning in, please subscribe to help support the channel, and we will see you next time. Ta-ta for now!